certainly positive news, especially in light of the fact that you've got 40, 50 million people at risk of being food insecure at the moment. On to Zimbabwe now. It's implementing measures to address a serious liquidity crunch that has forced some banks to actually maintain a maximum daily withdrawal limit of only $200. In fact, some banks have stopped loading money into ATMs altogether in order to manage this cash crisis. The Reserve Bank Governor, Dr. John Mangudia, insists the crisis is not being felt across all banks and the central bank is working on a policy to resolve the matter. Bank customers in Zimbabwe have been up in arms over their inability to get access to money from the banks. Farai Mokutuya covered that event earlier. He's live now from the capital, Harare, with more insights into what's going on. Um, Farai, let's step back a bit here and go back to the genesis of this crisis. How did we end up here with this cash crunch? Well, Rama, it's a, it's a number of factors. I think first and foremost, uh, a lack of confidence in the banking sector from ordinary Zimbabweans. And so that's why they don't put their money in the banks. It's estimated, depending on who you speak to, that as much as $4 billion is circulating outside the formal channels in traders and changing hands on the streets. And so uh, people not putting their money in the banks is uh, factor number one. Number two uh, is the fact that uh, a lot of money is being illicitly siphoned out of the country. Uh, the central bank government earlier this year in his monetary policy statement said more than one and a half billion dollars uh, left the country illegally last year and was externalized and that's obviously hemorrhaged uh, the economy and then lastly and perhaps uh, the most uh, significant fact is the fact that uh, productivity here is low Zimbabwe not exporting enough to be able to generate that forex and obviously trading in US dollars means that we need as much hard currency as we can. And so um, those are the major factors that have led us to this crisis that we find ourselves in now. In, indeed. Uh, financial inclusion has been something of a theme, especially from the finance minister over the last couple of months. In fact, as recently as March, the IMF was recommending that a lot more work be put into expanding financial inclusion. Where does mobile money uh, fit into that wider plan? Well, certainly the central bank here and the finance minister have been pushing uh, financial inclusion. In fact, just uh, two months ago, they launched a national financial inclusion strategy that aims to tap in the unbanked and perhaps mobilize more deposits uh, into the banking sector, which would ease uh, this crisis that we're suffering. Mobile money has really taken off here. It's grown exponentially, but uh, perhaps isn't uh, enjoying the success that it might be uh, purely because, A, uh, a lot of banks here have resisted it. Uh, they feel that uh, mobile companies are encroaching into their territory as banks. And also the fact that the charges are deemed to be a bit on the high side at this stage. And if they're brought down, then perhaps we could see a lot more uh, people participating and make you, making use of mobile money as well as cashless transactions, plastic money, for instance, uh, and bank transfers, which is something that the authorities here are really trying to push. Indeed. Um, uh, finally, Farai, I, I was looking at the figures on uh, payments from uh, Zimbabwe Central Bank uh, just before we went on air. Mobile money accounting for less than 10% of all payments made in Zimbabwe in the last quarter of uh, 2015. Um, mobile penetration is fairly high, at about 90%, and you've listed the technical issues that are limiting uh, the uptake of mobile money. Is there perhaps an attitude problem, perhaps a lack of trust in mobile money or electronic money for that matter in Zimbabwe? Well, I don't think it's a it's it's an attitude problem where people don't trust mobile money. I think, uh, as you mentioned, the mobile penetration extremely high. I think the issue is uh, a paradigm shift for Zimbabweans. We've, for many years now, been a very cash, uh, a cash society, a cash economy. People carry their cash with them. We pay for everything in cash, and that is one of the things that I think is is perhaps uh, behind this, where people want to have their hard currency in their back pockets, want to be able to pay for everything in cash, uh, and uh, that perhaps is, is the biggest challenge and certainly one of the things that uh, authorities here are trying to get changed and get people to adopt uh, methods that aren't necessarily cash. Indeed, we'll leave it there for the time being. Thank you very much for your insights. That's Farai Makutuya, of course, live from Harare. Uh, earlier on, he was covering, of course, the press conference uh, where those measures were announced by Zimbabwe's central bank.